Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I'm Amber and today I'm going to be sharing with you my wrap up for the first half of February. So this month, this first half of the month was very disappointing with me. Um, I did read five books in the first week, but the majority of them were lackluster, middling to poor. And then the next week I only read two books and they were both rereads. So not a very satisfying start of the month, um, especially as I was planning to read 20 books and I don't see that happening now because I didn't read five books um, last this last week. So yeah, it is what it is how it's going to be. Uh, I'm not too disappointed. I am still on track with where I want to be with my reading, but um, yeah, I just couldn't handle the idea of trying to read um, especially new to me books uh, right after reading like four books that just weren't that satisfying. So but anyways, I'll talk about the rereads first and the first two books that I reread were the sixth and seventh, the last books in the books series that I shall not name. Um, hopefully, well, hopefully I won't be reading these again this year, but I'm not expecting that to play out because I tend to go in and out of these series whenever, um, anxiety, depression comes to pl into play. Um, so I'm, I'm not one to force myself to not read something that I want to read or watch something that I want to watch. Um, it's just, it is what it is. Um. And I hate that sentence right now, so I wish I didn't say that. Anyways, the next book that I reread was The Hobbit by J.R.R. R. Tolkien. I read this in one day. Um, but yeah. Which is kind of surprising. I don't tend to read things in one day. Also, I didn't know this when I picked this up. Um, but there are illustrations in the, this this edition of The Hobbit. I checked the other ones because I did order a box set of these editions because I needed a new copy of The Lord of the Rings. Um, and I checked the other ones to see if they had illustrations, and sadly they don't, um, other than the typical ones that you can see in all editions, you know, because of the um, the riddle, that one riddle, you know, when they go into Moriah. Anyways, I enjoyed rereading that, especially with the added bonus of those illustrations. Um, I found them very enjoyable. I'm sorry, you know, I got a movie. <laughs> Girl. Um, but anyways, next is After the Rain by, um, well, this is a graphic novel adaptation of Nadidio Okor for his short story called On the Road. But the graphic novel itself is written by John Jennings and illustrated by David Brame. Now, this is something that um, seems to be a theme for this week. There, this one and the next book that I will talk about, um, where I purposely chose to read these this month because of people talking about these books. Um, like I just watched several people talking about them right before I chose to pick this up, these up, and none of them mentioning the format or talking about the fact that they're like this one be an adaptation of someone else's story and such like that. And I find that false advertisements that are giving us false expectations of what you're planning or what you're about to read. And I don't appreciate that. It makes me feel like I can't trust these people's reviews as much anymore because they gave me false expectations with these two books. Um, I, I just want to say to anybody who's possibly watching this who are reviewers, please, re please, when you're reviewing a book, talk about the format. It plays a huge part in in our expectations when we're reading. Um, it plays a part in if you want to read the book also because some people don't like graphic novels, some people don't like novellas, some people don't like short stories, and I feel like it's weird that nobody ever mentioned that this was an adaptation of something else. And if I had known that, I would have picked up the original first. Because I, I'm one of those people that believes in reading the, the original. Um, I'm just... I, I, it just gives you false expectations. And again, it makes me feel like I can't trust that person when they, they're not even willing to give you the full scope of what the, this, the books are. If that makes sense. So anyways, this is a graphic novel adaptation of a short story by Nnedi Okorafor um, called On the Road. And the story itself is about Chioma, who is Nigerian-American, visiting her grandmother back in Nigeria. And one day, a boy comes to the door and she opens it and finds that he, there, like, his head's bashed in and he should be dead. And crazy, horrific things start to happen after that. Um, 
it was a good quick read with a horror element that I enjoyed, but um, graphic novels are not something that I find very satisfying ever, really, mainly because I just don't get anything out of the illustrations. And you're, and the difference between like a novel that, like a full-length novel that has illustrations and a graphic novel is that you're not really dependent on the illustrations in a novel to get the story, whereas in a graphic novel, you kind of are. Um, not kind of, you are dependent on it. So it's just, I don't really enjoy that. It makes it feel like it goes by too fast and that it, you don't really, I don't feel like I get much out of it. It's not very fulfilling or satisfying to me. Um, for the most part, when it comes to it, it's very rare for me to find graphic novels that I wholeheartedly love. Um, the story is so interesting, so I definitely want to read the short story now to see if it's better than this one. Um, but it did kind of give me off like an episodic feel, like an origin story type thing, and you're going to see more kind of thing, which I don't think that's something to expect with this one. But I did enjoy the story, um, and if anybody who, who actually, ooh, that's a bad one to go to, um, if anybody actually likes Kevin Olive, this is kind of like the illustration style. Um, and I did enjoy like the art, but like not in the way that others probably would. I'm not artistically minded. I wouldn't, you know, I just think, well, it's good or bad. That's all I can think of when it comes to that. And again, it's not very satisfying to me reading a graphic novel because everything kind of goes by too fast. It just, you know, leaves me going like, meh. Um, so I did give this three stars, and I, like I said, I do plan to read the short story, and hopefully that will be better, um, than the graphic novel. The next one is a novella, and that is The Black Guzz Drum by P.J. Jelly Clark, and this is another thing, um, uh, another one where I had that same thing, where nobody mentioned the fact that it was a novella. If they did, I did not hear them say it. Um, it just went over, went one, through one ear, throughout the other kind of a thing. So... Um, I kind of frustrated by that because if I had known this was a novel, a novella, I would have tried to at least, um, find a way to get the audiobook because I just feel, and I still feel after reading this, that I probably would have enjoyed this much more if I was listening to it over reading it myself. Um, I've only ever listened to novellas like The Wayward Children. I, I don't know if I would enjoy it as much if I read it physically. I just, I don't know. Um... And I'm nervous to try that. I should test it, but I don't want to, like, ruin my enjoyment of the books. Anyways, um, so, here's the thing. I don't really like short-form books. I like novels. I like longer novels. I tend to enjoy reading books that are, like, 500 to up books. That's just my, where my tastes lie. Um, but anyways, I also think that this book could have done much better being in long form overall. Um, so this is about Creeper, who is a scrappy young teen who is still living on the streets of New Orleans. She sets her sights on securing a passage on aboard Captain Anne Marie's smuggler airship called Midnight Rubber by um, giving her information about a kidnapped Haitian scientist and a mysterious weapon he calls the Black Dad's Drum. And also, uh, Creeper has some... I would, I don't really feel like that kind of plays a huge a aspect of the, the story in the sense of like it's this big old secret because she because it's kind of revealed very soon. Um, it feels very soon into the book. But anyways, Oya, the African army show of the wind and storms, she speaks inside her head and grants her divine powers. And it also says that Oya has her own priorities, which I'm not really sure if that's even true because it just didn't really feel like it played a part in the story um, in a way that it kind of gives you off the idea of that. Um, but anyways. This is like, they describe it as retro, afro-futuristic, um, with, like, it's like it's alternate history. Um, I feel like it's more like fantasy steampunk. Um, I don't really understand the term afro-futuristic. Like, I, I'm pretty sure I understand the afro part, but the futuristic aspect, I'm not for sure I understand. Because it's not set in the future. It's set in, like, the 1800s um, with, like, futuristic elements you know, like the airship and such. So I'm, I'm just not sure about that. I definitely need to look that up. But anyways, the world, the alternate history aspect of this was so fascinating to me, but I never felt like I got a full handle on the world. And this is why I definitely say that this would have been better 
in a full-length novel because we could have dived into that world. Um, it could have been much more expanded and better explained. And I would have appreciated it and enjoyed this a lot more for that. And the story itself is great. I love the story. And again, another aspect that I felt like that could have been done better um, with it being a longer book because we could have gotten to know Creeper a lot better and the captain and it really felt like their story um, had it, their story would have had a lot more impact and the relationship between them would have felt stronger to me if they, we'd been able to spend more time developing that out. Um, and also I found Creeper to be annoying at times. I just, I don't know, maybe it's the whole thing that this is an adult book with a child's perspective and I never really enjoyed books that have that are adults but told in a child's perspective I just never enjoyed them that much uh, it's just it's a funny thing for me because you know I read YA middle grade um, I never found find them annoying in the way that I find them annoying or frustrating um, to read when it comes to adult novels fiction stories whatever uh, so I just found them very interesting um, and I actually found the captain much more interesting, a lot more complex, and I would have actually at least wanted her perspective. And again, it goes to it goes in with the whole idea of that I would have thought that I would have liked this to be longer, and so that we could have gotten both of their perspectives. Um, so I don't know. Again, this like with after the rain, it kind of gives off like an episodic um, feel to this. Like this is a start to a series. And if that is so, um, I will definitely continue on and hopefully find an audiobook of them so that I can listen to them and see if I enjoy it better that way. And also hopefully my the world will be more um, explained and better um, developed. But anyways, I did give this one three stars. Next is the Awasawa Murders by Riku Ando. Anda. Um, this is about the Awasawa Sawas who owned a prominent local hospital. And sometime in the 1970s, they host a large birthday party that ends up with 17 people dead from cyanide poisoning. And the only family member to, of the Awasawas to survive is their blind daughter, Hisako. Um, and then when the prime suspect commits suicide, it seems to seal his guilt. But it also puts doubts on the motive because it doesn't seem like there is much of a motive and so there's a lot of questioning about if he really was the the um, person who committed the crime and such and including the specter who was in charge of the case um he believes that Hisako must have played a part in the crime um and you're seeing this story told through interviews um with from of people like uh, the townspeople um, family members, neighbors, police investigators, and Hisako herself, and also the person who uh, wrote a book 20 years after the case um, going into the the story, the crimes. Um, yeah, the whole interview aspect of this was interesting at first. I liked the whole bird's eye point of view because in these interviews, the interviewer is omnipresent like you don't really you don't know them you don't know who they are you don't hear their voice you're only told what's going on. like you're only hearing the person who's being interviewed so it kind of gives you like that um like a dirt it, it was unique it's unique and interesting to read that um in that kind of narrative um at first but it kind of it got old real fast and this book turned slowly became boring and dragged a lot especially in the last half of the book um and I just felt like there was just nothing going on there's a lot of falsifying about the idea of witnesses and how when you're when, like imagine if a group of you and your friends like five or six of you um witnessed something like you saw something happen right in front of your eyes you all saw it together and then one by one you're asked separately what happened each one of you is going to have a different um description of what happened like similar but different um because we all see things differently and it's that whole idea of like that aspect being played out through the interviews seeing each person's perspective of the day of the events being played out differently from another similar but different and you kind of and that whole philosophy was interesting at first but again, it kind of got old because it kind of started just got repetitive um, with that whole aspect. 
Um, nothing really happens. The whole mystery unravels very slowly. You basically know who is actually behind it very early on. Like, you just know. Um, the kind of synopsis kind of messes with you on that point. Um, so this whole book is dependent on really the motive, which I felt from the very beginning was like the, was like the driving force behind this book was what was the motive? And you kind of see that with how people talked about this, this, like really just like the whole, it doesn't make sense with the motive, all this stuff. So you would expect a strong ending of really showing what that motive was, because that was what I felt like we were working towards, but no, this book has an open-ended Indeed. And it was frustrating and annoying and it felt like all that work to get to that point had no payoff um, and it just left you feeling very dissatisfied. And I, I didn't really appreciate that, uh, especially with this book, because it felt like that was like the whole, like that was where we were being led to was that motivation. Um, and we didn't get it. So two stars for that um and only two stars just because I, I I enjoyed like the whole idea about the witnesses it's something that I've thought about myself uh but anyways the next one is Children of the Land by Marcelo Hernandez Castillo and this is a memoir and I don't rate memoirs because it just feels weird to be rating someone's um story like they're here telling you their story it just feels weird to rate it um so this is his experiences uh, not only crossing the border between Mexico and the United States, but also his experiences of living in the United States as an undocumented immigrant. Now, this book really has no structure, and that in itself is something that was frustrating, and I wish I had known that from the start. If I had known that, I wouldn't have picked this up, I don't think, because I just, I like structure. I like feeling there's a purpose to things, and I didn't feel like this book had much of a purpose in how he placed his the stories it felt more like he was telling you his memories as they came to him and there was no purpose in like why he put puts that one next to that one and all that stuff like there's just no purpose didn't feel like there was a purpose to that it just you know um and i i don't know I've also felt like the fact that he's a poet plays a huge part in how this is written. And I felt like sometimes his points got lost because he was so focused on writing a beautiful sentence, paragraph, and such, to the point that I was, I got frustrated a lot of times because I just felt like where he was going got lost in the mix of writing a beautiful sentence. And I'm just like, please just get to the point. Also, I felt like because of that, um, there's just... It just felt like he was focused on the wrong thing. I would have appreciated this to be more straightforward in the writing style. Um, I like beautiful sentences and all that as long as there's actual purpose. Like you can see the see the sentence, see the point in the sentence. Um, I just didn't feel like I got that. Um, so I thought I would talk about the negatives right off the bat because those things are there and I don't didn't particularly like it and I was disappointed in how it was written because of that because it was hard to just read it and keep focused on it because of that but his story and his voice is valid um I definitely would think that if somebody who is more poetically minded than me um would enjoy this a lot better um and could possibly get more from it than me but there's a lot of things that he talks about that I never like really um new like this is something that has been on my mind a lot the whole fact that hitler used how we how the government how the u.s government treated the native americans to and how he treated the jewish community we are the standard for fascism like what the fuck and he talks about how in 1914 they were, he was talking about like, cause his grandfather, I think his great grandfather or grandfather, I don't know. He was crossing the United, to the United States, the legal way. And they would strip them naked and spray them with like pesticide or such, um, which automatically drew my mind to the, to the concentration camps when they would 
make them strip themselves from their clothes, pray them around, and then the people, they would be afraid with things, I think. And then also, if they were, like, the weak ones, they would go into the gas chamber. Like, and he, he mentions the fact that Hitler used that. We are the playbook. Okay, so it just, it blew my mind. And, and not in a good way. So, like, it was, this is not something that I ever really thought about before. And, anyways, so... There's a lot of things in this book that I did get out of it. There were things that I never knew, like, about, like, the whole green card thing. Um, and seeing, like, the psychological effects of living in this country for so long with that fear over your head. And how that affects you after you're you're legally there. And, and I put that in quotation marks. Um, and how you kind of have to like change the mindset and the behaviors that you have had because of that long-term fear of things. And so it was just all, there's a lot of things that I learned um, and I appreciated learning, but I really found the lack of structure and his overdoing of the poetical side of the writing to be really frustrating to get through. So those are all the things that I read in the past two weeks. Um, this week I will be starting, um, I'm going to be working my way through Air of Fire. I actually borrowed the physical book because I really just wanted to um, put that back into my main reading. And then I am working my way through um, Pretty Things. I got that today, um, last week. And then uh, Faces of Love, Jew-ish in parentheses, and Tomboy Lamb. So, yes, I'm going to be trying to read five books this week. Um, so, yeah. Hopefully next, this last half of the month, we'll do better reading-wise. My noodle is cold, so I'm going to go put her in the blanket. And I thank you so much for watching. I would love to hear your thoughts on um, anything that I've read. And what have you all been reading? And until next time, thank you all so much for watching.